Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, with us as always, or, or a lot recently actually, we have Maria Rozlikova. And I was just asking Maria about how to say her last name, it's Russian. Um, and um, she says I get it wrong every time. So Maria, um, sorry about that, but thanks for being on the webinar with us tonight. It's okay, my pleasure as usual. Okay. Well, before we get started really quickly, my name is Emily Bradley and um, I'm with the Meta Education and Support Team here in North America. Um, we do, and we have kind of been starting this past summer, regular educational videos so we can reach the end users and, and help you guys in any way possible. So um, if you guys do have questions about certain procedures, um, when it comes to scanning, scan techniques, scan path, whatever you're looking for, please respond to the, the webinar email. Um, or you can send an email directly to me. It's emily.bradley at medit.com. And um, we will build a rep webinar around your needs. So we would love to hear from you and um, kind of just learn what you would like to learn more about. Um, that being said, I want to remind everybody this is being recorded. So we are trying to get this recording to go out the following day with the follow-up email. Now, in some cases, it's just not being sent. We don't know for sure why it's not being attached, but if you would like to watch it again, um, please email me again, emily.bradley at medit.com. And then also, I wanna remind everybody that we will take questions. Now, um, in order to send a question, you're gonna click the little chat box on um, the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. You'll type your questions in, they'll come directly to me, and then I can ask them to Maria. Uh, Maria usually does a really thorough job of explaining explaining um, different processes and new apps and everything. So um, sometimes there's not a lot of questions, but we're here. If you if you do have a question, please ask it. Um, Maria, I think that that is all, and we can get started. You can kind of I'll let you introduce the webinar. What we're doing today, it's going to be a quick one. Um, basically. This is kind of a cool concept because it's um, basically a one-click app, which I think is pretty awesome, and you'll take us through the process. And then um, we wanted to also follow up when, when you're done here um, with what our upcoming webinar is. So um, we'll touch on that also at the end of the webinar. And I I think I've covered everything, haven't I? Yeah, I think we've so. done this enough. That <laughs> hopefully I'm not leaning, leaving anything out. So that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and turn the time over to you, and um, yeah, we'll get started. Thank you. Um, so yeah, as Emily just said, it's a very quick webinar because also, as she just mentioned, it's a one-click app, which is amazing. This is something that I think uh, is very different from our usual apps. Um, so the one that we're going to talk about is called MetaDCM Converter, and um, that is a app, one-click app that actually allows our users to convert their three shape DCM files into the files that can be used inside MetaLink, inside the Medit ecosystem. And then, of course, if you export them from MetaLink, you will have them in any format that you like, PLY, STL, OBJ. So I'm just gonna show you this quick process, um, and then I'm gonna let you know how, like for what reasons you might wanna use it, because it's not that you you can you can convert those files, but you can also work on them in any of our apps, in um, scan for clinics, you can rescan. So let's just dive straight into it. So as usual, we're starting here in the uh, MetaLink app box, and you see that this is the app. And if you don't have it installed, just press this button here. If you don't have it, it will be installed. And then as usual, you will see it in your um, case detail window on the um, top right side. So I'm going to my case box. Um, let's create a new case. I'm gonna call it DCM test. Uh, here's my here's my case, and now I'm gonna press this button, which is attach. And um, here I have my DCM files. You can see that they have three shape logo. They are DCM dot DCM files. This is what it is. And actually, what we, so we have um, DCM files for this model. My favorite model, probably you already recognize it. Um, and um, so what we did, we actually scanned the upper upper jaw, lower jaw, and then we scanned the bite. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to import just upper jaw and lower jaw scans, and I'm going to scan the occlusion in Scan for Clinics. And Maria, I think it's important to mention um, when when you go here, um, you can see all your apps up there in the upper right hand corner. So when they actually do um, install an app, this is where they're going to find it once they've created a case name and then they go um, to register and scan. You'll see the apps up there in the upper right hand corner. Yeah, 
So I mean, I just attached the files, and as you can see, they're here in the file viewer. They under um, attachment category, and as you see, even if I click on them, it shows me that this type of file cannot be previewed. Um, so here are how those files, and now I click this button, which is a button for DCM converter, and yeah, here I have them. It's just that simple. I mean, when when is anything in life that simple? One click. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. So yeah. now I have those files here as DCM files, and then I have them here in Medit Mesh format. So if you hover over, uh, you see that the file extension is Medit Mesh. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to press the scan button, and I'm going to open scan for clicks. Um, as usual, here I have my my scanner with me, my S700. Again, everything that we do uh, supports both scanners, i500 and i700. Um, next time, if there's something to scan, I'm just going to bring my i500, I guess. Um, so now I go to Max Paxless stage, and I press this button. This button allows me to import scan data from my MetaLink case. So I have it attached to my MetaLink case. So I'm going to click on it, and I have it right here, upper jaw. So you I select could, obviously the I, upper draw once you've had the yeah. you know the the stage at the top selected. Yeah. So okay. I, I think many would have expected the scan data um, be right here um, on on the at the corresponding stage, but it doesn't work like this because it's not the data that you actually scanned. And in Medi Scan for Clinics, like its major point is that you actually scan it. So that's why you have to use this button. So here I have my upper jaw. I'm going to go to, again, and use this uh, function, and I'm going to import my lower jaw scan. And actually, for example, um, the up, upper jaw file that you see um, here, so it has a, it has a prep tooth. So um, for example, imagine that um, this, is, this is this data, and I scan it like this. So of course, it's a, it's a crown, but imagine that I did a diagnostic scan. Uh, with a three-shape scanner, and then I saw a patient another day, and I wanted to, and I prepped my patient, and I wanted to scan um, in order to, you know, make a crown or create a case so I can send it to a lab. So what I could do is I could, um, could import my DCM files, I can convert them, I can open it, them just like this, and then I can trim out this part. So we imagine it right now that it's a, uh, it's a. It's a diagnostic scan and um, no prep tooth was there. And I trimmed out this data. So, and I'm going to use my scanner to scan this part again. All right. And as always, when you're adding new information to a model, you want to make sure that you start on a previously scanned area when you cut something out. And then you can move over the the cutout area and add the information there. <clears throat> and another thing we were talking about yesterday, um, Maria and I, is it does help, maybe Maria, you can just show them um, the scan depth tool um, oh, when yes. scanning a prep and so forth. It does help to increase the scan depth a little bit. And what that is, if you understand the technology that the Medit uses, it's cameras, two cameras. So it's almost, it's just increasing the scan depth as you're scanning. So um, it's helpful, a helpful tool to use while you're um, doing preps and so forth scan bodies yeah actually it takes you less time to scan at least from my experience if you increase skin depth when you scan um, prep teeth yeah, so I, I did an additional scan just like this and um, also while we're at this um, I think that it's also good that um, last time when we talked about i700 I mentioned remote control mode and here it is so um, it's really it's a really nice tool as as we talked about last time. If you're really new to digital dentistry um, and you feel a little bit overwhelmed by all the functions and all the UI and stuff, so you can scan just like this. So you don't need to see anything else. So in order to get into remote control mode, and remember that this is a feature that's significant and exclusive to basically the i700, and in order to get into remote control mode, she's going to hold that white button right in the center for a long hold, and that opens up remote control mode. And you'll see that in remote control mode, 
um, a lot of the icons are gone. It's just the model. And from there, she can actually use the button on the, the scanner to rotate, to pan, and to zoom in and out. So it just depends on if it's a long hold or if it's a short hold um, in order to switch between rotate, pan, and zoom, and, and so forth. So um, again, just like what Maria just said, um, basic scan mode is what she was using before. And that's that's good with i500 and i700, but the i700 does allow you to go into remote control mode and not go back to your keyboard or your mouse while you're scanning. Um, so it's pretty convenient. It is, it is for sure. Um, and now just as I said before, we're going to scan the occlusion. So I'm going to the occlusion stage and I'm just going to scan. And as usual, if you have any any trouble um, scanning the occlusion, if it if it takes some time to align, don't hesitate to just use manual alignment. It's nothing wrong with it. It's it's totally fine. Um, here, I it took me what, five five around five teeth to get my um, occlusion, but we do recommend scanning four teeth on each jaw, um, even if it becomes green even faster. So, so yeah. um, that's a really good point with occlusion. And, and when you're having difficulty with occlusion, always check your buckle surfaces. We're just going to throw in some pointers here as we go throughout the webinars. Um, if you're having difficulty picking up a buckle occlusion or an occlusion, you're going to want to check your buckle scans to make sure that they're clear and solid and they don't have a lot of holes that will help occlusion. And then um, what I wanted to mention, what Maria just brought up, is um, we will have future webinars that we will be talking about how to manually occlude um the arches if you're having issues because that occlusion may you know possibly be off there just a little bit so that's okay we just really want to see how this dcm converter works and how we can make changes to it but um yeah we'll have more information on how to take a really good occlusal scan and then also manually align and so forth so yeah so now that i took the occlusion scan i'm just going to uh, go to the complaint stage where i can i, I have this option to choose um, among the three options about how I would like to handle the empty spaces, the holes in, in the scan data. So I can actually just leave it as it is, or I can fill them. Um, and so this function that previously used to be in a medit link, now it's back to scan for clinics. And then I can create um, a, a, a 3D printable model, um, but probably you would want to do this in model builder now. Um, so I'm going to use this one when I click on this option, which would leave my data as it is. Um, so the whole scanning process is being finalized and then the post-processing will start in Medellin. Perfect. All right. Yeah, so here we are. We have attachments here, which has um, my uh, DCM files in medit mesh format and then i have actual scans that i just took um yeah so this is pretty much it this is a super simple way to um for uh, maybe for users for our users who transfer in from free shape or maybe they have multiple scanners um in in their clinic um and you know if you want to have all your files at the same place uh, or maybe you know, something, something happened, maybe you just need to scan um, this patient um, on this chair where you have met it. So yeah, you don't need to worry about it, just yeah, utilize DCM converter and uh, you will be able to store all the files of MediClink because MediClink has amazing options to, um, to actually manage all the history, manage all the history by patients or by case. So yeah, just, um, it doesn't matter if you have multiple scanners or if you're transferring, we have those tools to just keep you on the track and um, getting you started with uh, everything Medit. Perfect. It makes it easy to make a transition to Medit for sure. And then if you're working with somebody who was working with 3Shape, for instance, then you can still work with those files through the DCM converter. So, um, you know, anyone who's watching this right now can see why we did add um, a little bit, a little bit, not much, but of the I-700 in there, because truly it is just about attaching a file and then one click to convert them. So. Um, you guys have made it really easy on us, um, gratefully. So again, I always like to say, hey, um, shout out to all the developers there because you guys um, 
keep taking requests from end users um, and, and we see these you know coming up with each update we see new new things showing up so we know you guys work really hard we're grateful for that um, and then our next webinar Maria next Wednesday same place same time um, it is Medit compare am I right yes so talking okay. about users request <laughs> If you're very active or moderately active, if you go to our Facebook user group from time to time, you probably saw, or maybe you were one of the one of the users who requested um, us to add sculpting tools to edit mesh data. Um, and yeah, um, actually our CTO Michael he posted a video like a sneak peek of what you're gonna get with Compare 1.2 because. Yes, I guess the main function and main addition to it would be that you can actually sculpt data, you can add, remove, smooth, morph the material, and it, it's amazing. I've been, I've been toying around with it for a long time, and actually it's very exciting that now I can talk about it because, you know, while we develop it, we want to just go and spread the news and say, you know, we're doing this. Um, but yeah, now, now we can do it, and I can wait to see feedback. And... Um, it's coming up very, very soon. So by next week, Wednesday, which is Thursday for me, um, we're going to be able to talk about it. And I'm going to introduce you to all the cool features. And I promise you, some of them will change your workflow for sure. So That's I'm great. And so basically, we're getting the webinar here in North America the day it's being released. So it's not like... Yeah. Generally, most people are going to need to wait to learn a little bit more about it in order to use it. So hopefully you can hit the round running on Thursday, knowing and understanding how to use all the new tools and the, the you know how it's been updated. So um, yeah, tune in. We're super excited about that. If you don't have the link and you can't find it, say for instance, on Facebook, if you're not on Facebook, again, I always just say, if you have any questions, if you have um, suggestions of webinars, if you need info, recordings, whatever, just email emily.bradley at medit.com. Um, and um, again, these are these are intended to help um, the end users. Um, so in any way we can help, please reach out and we're excited to, um, to be partnered with everybody out there. Um, Maria, thank you. I think that's it for today and yes. we'll see everybody next Wednesday. See you. Thanks a lot, bye-bye. Bye-bye.